Hello, and welcome back to The Foundation Presents. My name is Mike Schramm, and I am a member of the board of the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, a private nonprofit dedicated to expanding on the curriculum in the West Hartford Public School system so that the students in the town can have a more enriched educational experience. Uh, today, I'll be having on three different individuals, a teacher from Charter Oak, a representative from Hamilton Heights, one of the donors to the foundation, and Kathy Woods, who is the co-president of the foundation and a teacher at Norfelt Elementary School. And now I'd like to welcome Adrienne Gemateo, a third grade teacher at Charter Oak Elementary School, who's here to talk about her two grants, Birds of Prey and Rick Labadia, an author in residence. Adrienne, can you tell me a little bit about these grants? Sure, let's start with Birds of Prey first. So as part of the third grade curriculum, uh, students learn about animal adaptations. So specifically, not just animal body parts, but how they help them to survive the wild. So you can imagine it's a pretty fun unit to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, but what the foundation has allowed us to do is bring in Julianne Collier, who uh, co-founded Wing Masters in Massachusetts. And uh, she brings in five birds of prey every year. So what's amazing is the students learn about all the adaptations, uh, but then they actually get to see them in real life, right in front of them. So for example, this year she brought in two falcons, a red tail hawk, and three different owls. You can imagine the looks on these students' faces when they get to see these uh, birds of prey up close and personal. I must say, when I was in third grade, I would have <laughs> loved that opportunity. So this is not just a one-off grant, correct? It, has been going on for many years? Correct. The foundation has allowed us to do this now for the past five years, which has been so engaging for the students because you can probably, as a third grader, understand <laughs> like reading something in a book is a lot different than seeing it in person. So this is one of those experiences that last with them for their entire lives um, and can actually inspire them to go on to like veterinary services or how to actually help animals um, in their habitat and in the environment. So it's a very inspiring unit. And I would imagine that this has become somewhat of a tradition at Charter Oak. Do the students know about it in advance and look forward to third grade oh, yes. specifically for it? And not only the students, but the teachers. I can say personally, <laughs> it is our favorite day of the year. It's our favorite third grade experience. And uh, there's some jealousy on the part of the other educators because they don't get to come to it. I'm sure I would be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and it is something that the students look forward to. They hear about it in K1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And then even after it in fourth and fifth, they come back and they're like, oh, is Julie Julianne here. I mean, they really, really love seeing her and all the birds. Now, talk to me a little bit about Rick Labadia coming into the school. Oh, so Rick Labadia, a famous published author, but also retired West Hartford educator, um, came in this year for a new grant that actually serviced kindergarten through third grade. So um, as part of our International Baccalaureate program, uh, we have a transdisciplinary theme called How We Express Ourselves and What's a Great Way to Express Yourself Through Writing. And we've taught this poetry unit for the past four years. This year with Rick's uh, Grant was amazing. Uh, he came in, he talked about the whole writing process, and he brought our students through the writing, the editing, the revising, and the publication process. So all of our third graders ended up with a published poetry book. While he was there, he also wrote how-to books with kindergartners and fairy tales with second graders. So mm -hmm. he spent a lot of time in our school in this one grant. Now, how does that tie in with the broader curriculum? So writing, is absolutely a huge part. And um, in terms of our curriculum, we want our students to be able to express themselves through writing because when you are an adult, whatever knowledge you have, you're gonna have to be able to choose the genre of writing. So where we teach the narrative, the informative, and the opinion, it's also important to teach all the genres of writing. Now, you have been a teacher in the West Harvard Public School System for about 10 years, right? Correct. Can you tell me about your general interactions with the foundations throughout that time? I can just say the foundation has been incredible. They come into our classrooms every single time we have one of the grants. They're actually even willing to come help us write the grants. So if we have an idea, um, they really want to help us get the grants. It's not, you know, they dangle the carrot and say, come get it. We spend all that time. They have been amazingly supportive. Mm -hmm. And um, they've also found a way to actually get all the information out to the community as well. So even with Facebook and this, so grants that are happening in our classroom that the community might not know about, they're now getting able to see. So I know they were able to see the Julianne Collier pictures and they're really, the community is starting to really understand what an impact it's having in our classrooms. 
And you have two children at Charter Oak, right? So you've experienced it from the parents' angle. Right. So um, this year, one of my daughters was in kindergarten and one of my daughters was in second grade. So they came home with the how-to book and the fairy tale that they worked with a published author. So to see how excited they were, it was so nice to see as a parent. And then I could in turn see that in my students mm -hmm. doing the same thing. So it was quite nice to see the combination. Yeah, I'm sure it's you're a little <laughs> spoiled. Not every teacher who gets a grant gets to see that I, from the I, <laughs> side of things as well. Correct, correct. Yeah, and going back to the Birds of Prey grant, I'm, I have to imagine that that is one of the most captivating things that the students will do throughout their entire career in the oh, public yeah. school system, certainly at Charter Oak. But do you see students going on to be more actively interested in the sciences and, and pursue those fields of study more so than before the grant? Absolutely, because you know, you always kind of start the year as, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then I think as the year progresses with experiences like this, there's that hand on learning that they just can't get enough of. So, you know, so it's one thing, you know, when she had the falcon on her hand and, you know, she said, what are the adaptations that you see? And it's not just, oh, I mean, they're actually looking at this bird and looking at the talons and the beak. And this was just something so engaging that now you spark the interests of these students to say, maybe I want to be a vet. Maybe I, I mean, she's licensed for raptor rehabilitation. Maybe that's something where before, would that even be an option? Would a third grader say, I want to be a raptor rehabilitator. But then <laughs> after not. this experience, it's something that they can say. Or, you know, before, before third grade, you like to write, but can you be a published author? And mm -hmm. I think this experience exposes them to a plethora of options for them when they are adults. And I think that uh, both of these grants sound like very tactile, hands-on learning, and we hear so much now about how school districts have to cut money for the arts, mm -hmm. have to get rid of recess and gym classes, and the students are stuck more and more in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this seems like a way to get them a little more actively engaged in the learning. I suppose talk to me a little bit about that. Right, and um, you know, with our International Baccalaureate program, we do what's called an interdisciplinary way of teaching mm -hmm. so that everything's connected. It's not math is separate from reading, that's separate from science. So one of the things we try to do is get everything together. So what's funny is, even even talking about these two grants, you would think that they're very separate. Mm -hmm. You have this science heavy adaptations unit, and then you have this poetry writing. And normally you wouldn't really see those two going hand in hand. But yet the experience that we had with Julianne, when we got back to the, um, the classroom, they were so excited about these birds that they wanted to express themselves. So <laughs> how would they do it? Usually we have them write something up. But because they were so engaged with the poetry through Rick, we had 10 students that actually wrote poems about different birds. So oh, it's wow. that interdisciplinary learning that, you know, takes, it's connecting all the dots for the kids. And that's when retention is the highest. So mm -hmm. these experiences are the things that are making the children remember their education. You're not going to remember much. I know I think about, you know, when I was in third grade, what do I, re you know, remember from sitting in that chair? It's the experiences that you have that you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. Well, those sound like two fabulous grants. Adrienne, thank you so much for coming on the show to talk to us about them. Thank you so much. Michael. And now I'd like to welcome in Paige Davison, the Engaged Life Director at Atria Hamilton Heights. Paige, can you tell me a bit about how Hamilton Heights is involved with the foundation? Right. Well, we just started uh, forging a relationship with the foundation this year. It just basically started in the springtime. We had an idea of our mom cell that we've been doing for the past three years. This year, I wanted to have our funds go to a different cause, a different thing. And what really struck home with me was the fact that our education system here was going to be having and feeling a lot of budget cuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that in mind, I'm like, wow, we are in West Hartford. We have a lot of individuals that live in our community that have grandchildren, great-grandchildren going to school in the West Hartford Public School System. And what a better way to give back is to have our greatest generation giving to the future generations of West Hartford. I love the idea of working with the community and giving my residents purpose with the things that they are doing and then it just brings the intergenerational thing all the way back into play. It's a wonderful win-win for everyone and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what's going to happen this September. And now the fundraiser specifically is your mum sale, right? Mm -hmm. That's happened for a few years now? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we started it a couple of years ago and we were having our monies go towards the uh, Alzheimer's Foundation, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic cause. Uh, but what I wanted to find was a, a benefit of some kind that our residents could actually get their hands dirty with. Mm -hmm. And the thought of being able to foster relationships with elementary schools, with high schools, and with our middle schools, because I've got so many educators that live there, and whatever they can possibly do to give back and to be a part, the mentoring part, the learning part, and just the intergenerational, as I mentioned, that aspect of it, just brings so much life, not only to my residents, but then it comes back to, to the kids as well. They learn so much from it too. And I think that point of the generational relationship building is something that might go unnoticed by many people uh, as something that is important to carry out. But obviously, you have an older population. They haven't been in the West Harvard Public School System for a while. But do your residents have any connections to the school system through employment or family or anything like that? Absolutely. I was just talking to one today who was so excited about being a part of this. She was a teacher over at Webster Hill. And uh, she was saying that she was excited about that. And her children went on to be public school teachers in West Hartford as well. I've got a resident uh, that is just a jewel of mine whose daughter is a teacher over at Norfeld. And uh, again, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, there are so many ties that, that are to the West Hartford uh, children and the school system. And there's a lot of excitement about what they're going to be able to do to, to help promote uh, just the good things that the monies are going to bring. And you've been a resident of West Hartford for a few years mm -hmm. now. Had you interacted with the foundation at all before this? No, and it was interesting when I, I came up with this brainstorm idea of, wow, we could do this mom cell and have the funds go to our school system. What a great thing it would do. I just sent an email, a blast out to all of the people that was on the school board here in West Hartford and said, hi, I'm Paige, this is my idea y'all interested in something like this? And then immediately, you know, I, I got a great response back. Oh, absolutely, Paige, let's get together, let's meet. We're already doing what you wanna do. We already got the play into plan, it's, it's happening. And uh, let's meet and make this happen. So I'm so excited about forging this relationship. This being the first time that we're doing it, I just see it growing incredible legs and just getting bigger and better and better every year. Yeah, well, certainly from my perspective, I hope this is the first of many years to come that the foundation and Hamilton Heights can partner up like this. And you're actually the first donor that we have had on the show. Ah. But uh, one of the things that we're trying to do with this program is to educate the town and residents about the foundation and what it does. And uh, part of that aspect is talking with donors and hearing about why it is that they want to support the foundation and the West Hartford Public School System more broadly. Um, can you speak a little bit about your personal experience with the, the West Harvard Public School System? Sure, I sure can. Before I was uh, given the opportunity to, to work with the seniors at Hamilton Heights, I had had a chance to work in the public school system. I was a full-time substitute over at Whiting Lane and had the most wonderful, wonderful experience over there. There was nothing more beautiful than getting up and going into school and being told, you're in second grade today or you're in fifth grade today and it was so much fun but what I saw every single day was what those teachers did day in and day out to make it that much more wonderful for the kids and their learning experiences and I remember the media uh, the instructor over there Lee Gluck who had uh, she had so many wonderful ideas with what she wanted to do with the library and the expansion and bringing different people in and how they do how they were going to do it but of course there was no money in the school system to be able to do that except for doing it with the grants and it never ever the pieces never came together until finally this year when I realized that is what this money is going for and how incredible it is to be a part and to watch how something like that it seems like such a small amount but how much it makes such a big impact on our children in the school system and I love the fact that we have such innovative teachers and they're always looking for the next thing that they can possibly do to just enlighten and brighten our kids. I currently am uh, the mother of a senior this year at Conard High School and I also have a third grader over at Walcott. So I'm, I'm vetted in this community and I am absolutely whatever I can do to be a part of it and to make it better and to give my children a better opportunity at, uh, at growing and learning. Uh, whatever I can do, I'm, I'm all game. Yeah, I, I personally really appreciate that sentiment. I've lived in West Hartford for most of my life and I've found 
that the thing that sets West Hartford apart as a community from other towns is the quality of the educators that we have in the school system. Viewers of this program will know that the, the teachers, the librarians, the principals, everyone who works in the school system is extremely dedicated to the kids. And like you said, on certain budget times, the state still has no budget. It looks like West Hartford might get a pretty significant cut in education funding. And uh, that kind of an attack on the crown jewel of this great town is something that makes me nervous as someone who loves this town. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm sure that as a parent, as someone who's invested in the public school system, you're feeling that as well. So I'm really grateful that you are willing to make this partnership happen and I hope that it can last for many years to come. If our viewers are interested in buying a mum, and who doesn't want a mum, let's be honest, how can they get that? What is the time frame for the sale? Where should they go? We're having our sale in September. It's going to be on the 16th and the 17th, a Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. The 16th is primarily going to be a fun day that is going to be for all families. And uh, we start at 8 o'clock in the morning. We're having a ton of moms being brought in. They're $6.50 a plant or 6 for 36 and uh, we have musical entertainment that afternoon from the cartels coming to perform from two to four. We're having tie-dye booths. We got crafters corners. We have Qdobo Mexican eatery there with all of their proceeds going to the foundation. And the same with the grounds guys with their proceeds going to the foundation. It's just gonna be a festive and fun time. This Sunday will be an event where it's primarily just for moms. So we're gonna have the fun day on Saturday where you can buy the moms, but if you miss out on that day, come back around on Sunday from eight to four and it's strictly moms and we're ready to make a deal. All right, well Paige, thank you so much for coming on and our viewers, if you're interested in getting your moms this season, please Hamilton Heights, it'll benefit them, it'll benefit the foundation for the West Hartford Public School System. It's a great thing to do. Paige, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And finally, I'd like to welcome on Kathy Woods, a kindergarten teacher at Norfell Elementary and also one of the co-presidents for the foundation. Kathy, can you tell me a bit about your involvement with the foundation? So I started with the foundation probably six years ago. This will be my sixth year on the board, um, but knew about the foundation long before that. I have five children that have gone through the West Hartford Public School System. Um, three are currently still at Conard and other, the other two have graduated. And it was probably years ago when they were at Brayburn when they did an artist in residence and that artist helped all the students at Brayburn create a mural that still hangs today in the lobby of the building. So that was the thing, I think that I first realized what the foundation actually does. And since then I've been to West Hartford's Cooking, I've done all kinds of things and it was six years ago that I was asked to come onto the board, which I've never regretted it since. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, when you first found out about the foundation, what was one thing that stuck out to you? Because there are lots of groups that want to make an educational experience in any town better than what it already is. Um, so what, what was unique about the foundation? You, you know, I think one thing that drew me to the foundation is the fact that I am an educator and also that I had been spending a lot of my free time volunteering on PTO boards and different things within the community and the, especially the school communities. And I really liked the idea that this was on a bigger basis to help not just the school I, my kids were going to, but the entire district. And it just brings so many different amazing events and programs to our school and to our students that the budget of our school district couldn't otherwise afford. So it just really enhances the district's you know, curriculum and allows the teachers to do things that are just so unique that are very memorable to our students. Um, now, right now in Connecticut, obviously, times are tough. We don't have a budget. The town has a budget, but that might have to change depending on whatever happens in Hartford. Can you just elaborate a bit on the importance of the foundation now specifically in these economically uncertain times? You know, I think especially being a teacher and being, you know, so engrossed in the, the, the school system, um, it's a worry of everybody. It's a worry of parents, it's a worry of schools, school teachers, of school administrators. And I think the foundation is one of those, those organizations that just is able to make sure that there are still gonna be great things happening in our schools. You know, we might have our supply budget cut a little bit um, for teachers and for staff, 
but you can still make sure, certain that if teachers put in a little bit of effort to write a grant, they're going to be able to produce some amazing things in, the, in, their, in their classroom. Now speaking of those grants, are there any that stick out in your mind as ones that were particularly interesting or emblematic of the larger work that is done in the school system? Uh, you know, my kids have seen and so many different, so many different grants over the years, um, and I've seen so many grants that have been done at all so many different schools. This will be my third school teaching in, over the years. Mm -hmm. I've seen amazing artists in residence um, that allow students to work with all different types of mediums. I've seen the birds of prey that you were talking about earlier. Um, my kids got to do an amazing juggling program at Brayburn over the years that I know that the PTO eventually continued on because it was met with such great enthusiasm. Um, last year I was at Aiken and they did an amazing hip hop program for the course of the year. And I think when sometimes people hear some of the events that are going on, they might be like, well, what has hip hop got to do with education? Well, it's an amazing um, cultural piece. You know, it brings kids that may not otherwise uh, feel comfortable in a classroom setting and they may not excel in math or science but this is something that they feel good about themselves in. Um, so it's just a, there's so many different things that are I, I, what I love about it is that teachers think out of the box but and they are able to tie it to the curriculum and just bringing some amazing events. Has your perception of the foundation or the school system changed since you became involved with the foundation or now that you're one of the co-presidents? It has. I, I um, I'm very, I'm trying to think of a nice word to put it, I'm, 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 I'm a huge supporter of our teachers. And when there might be a grant that might seem a little out there, and sometimes people may not always see how that might reach our students, I'm right there fighting for them saying, no, this is the way to go. This is going to be awesome. And if this teacher put that kind of that emphasis on it, and that's going to be a great thing. Yeah, one of the most enlightening aspects of being on the, the board for the foundation for me has been going through the grant reading process and seeing the grants that teachers are putting together and how exciting they are, how much they draw from multiple exactly. disciplines that's so important for the town and for the students because if, if students are learning in these silos where they go from science class right. to English class to social studies and they never see how those things interact more broadly, uh, they'll have a tough time transitioning into uh, high school, college, etc. And one of the things that I noticed when I went to college, I went to a small liberal arts school in Pennsylvania, and I felt like I was one of the most prepared students there because of the experiences that I had at the foundation, or at the, in the West River Public School System. And I know that the foundation helped add to that experience. Right. I can still remember grants from when I was a student. And I didn't even know that the foundation existed. <laughs> I just thought they were great programs that were put on by the town. Uh, I, I suppose that's not much of a question, but kind of spin off of that. Right, I, I think that's true for a lot of people. I think a lot of parents are very aware of these different programs that are going on in their school. I think they just assume that the school is paid for it or the PTO mm -hmm. is paid for it. And sometimes that might be true of a little bit of both. I mean, the foundation supports a lot of grants. Um, sometimes we partially fund grants and the PTO or other, fund, other sources do pick up some of the funding. Um, it just all depends on how the teacher goes about applying for the grant. Um, but it's a, it's a fantastic organization. We're in our 20th year. Um, it was, the, you know, the foundation was started about 20 years ago by Dougie Trumbull and Heather Congdon. And they were two West Hartford residents that just had this idea that you know our schools were great, but how can we do give them a little bit of extra money to to make some do some extra special things that wouldn't fit into the school budget? Um, and here we are, 20 years later. So the foundation has been growing for 20 years, handed out almost one and a half million dollars in grants in that time. Where do you see the foundation going in the future? You know, I just think it's going to just continue to to soar. I think some of, we're really this board has got a lot of energy. Um, we've got 
people on the board who have grown children who went through the West Harvard Public School System and now have grandchildren in the system. We have people like myself who have children in the system currently, and we have people like yourself who don't have children in the system <laughs> but who graduated through the system. So I, I feel like there's a lot of diverse energy on the board. I feel like we are thinking outside the box to try and forge new relationships, as for instance, with Hamilton Heights. Um, we're looking to do things with Great by Eight. We're just trying, we're, we're looking and exploring all different avenues to, you know, be all encompassing with our community and to make sure that we give the West Hartford Public School System what they need. If there's one thing that you could communicate to our donors, what would it be? The money that you put into the foundation directly affects every child in our school district and those children are our future. Great. I think that's a great note to end on. Kathy, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Foundation Presents. I'm Mike Schramm, a member of the board of The Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools. If you're interested in learning more about The Foundation, any of the grants that we fund, or how to contribute, please check out the website here.